the all-seeing eye. No, that's just a camera. Welcome to the Syntegration Station with your conductors Ryan and AJ. Today the discussion is focused on cameras, security, door access, and so much more. So tune in now, here on the Syntegration Station. Welcome to the Syntegration Station. This is your conductor Ryan. And this is AJ. And we are here talking about cameras and cameras, surveillance video and surveillance door access door right. access video all the door things access. video video door station video mm -hmm. doorbells yeah. all the things that relate to making sure you have eyes on your home in your home and just making sure that you feel safe and secure yeah and you just you have you can visually see things that happen in your house anywhere in the world basically yeah i think we're talking, you know, the the Ring brand has really grown that section of business because it's it's uh, really made it very easy for people to add some sort of camera to mm -hmm. their house in in, in in you know in in a way that was very difficult before. Prior to Ring and Doorbot, uh, which is what it was called before. Uh, yeah. pr prior to Ring, we we sold door stations. We sold video door stations. I've sold a whole bunch of video door stations, uh, but they were called door stations, and that that name is just imposing it's it 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 requires an access control system behind it um yeah. it uh we had to use weird words like sip and intercoming and things like that when we yeah, were tying it was tied in. into the phone system and answering it wasn't like a connected smart device it was like a camera with a little bell but it would ring the phone and mm -hmm. there was a lot to it yeah and ring uh also they they introduced a new concept and and there may have been other brands and technology back then too but they introduced this concept of cloud recording and so and i don't know if it was ring i, I doubt it was ring specifically that came up with cloud recording uh, but the concept is you know the video comes in from the camera and instead of it storing on some local vcr tape server um, or hard drive in this case uh, you actually push it to the cloud the cloud the cloud everybody knows of the cloud but yeah before the cloud it was like really hard to just get a camera system deployed. Mm -hmm. Probably even harder to find the footage you really wanted to see. That was a big deal. I mean, the yeah. user experience for cameras has come just leaps and bounds from where it was before. I, I remember, you know, when I first started, uh, and there was a problem at a at a at a facility or a property, uh, I had to go out and scan through the footage, scroll through all the, you know, it, it find the block of that the cops needed the, the chunk of the video and I would export it. It would always be in some weird AVI file format or something that no one understood. And, uh, and it's so, harder back then. It was, it was harder. They, they've, they've definitely improved, which is good. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of technology, True. right? Get it better. Um, yeah, we were kind of talking about the history. Uh, so back in the day we had analog cameras, uh, these were, you know, the cameras were not smart whatsoever. The video, you know, you had a just a camera. You had a power supply connected to the camera. The camera would see the video, would pipe that into some kind of NVR, or actually it was called a DVR back then, digital Central video recorder. Recorder, yeah. Um, and then we we upgraded to IP-based cameras, and then it became an NVR or a network video recorder. So, and then and then that's kind of where we're at right now is NVRs and cloud storage. So. It uh, it's sort of a chicken and egg problem. We needed the cameras to get better. So it was like the analog, to digital, but now we're still digital, but we're smart digital. Yeah, I it's, like that. It's like the two-way feedback. The device itself is a connected device. It's not just a view that you're importing into an NVR, but rather it is, it has processing power. It mm -hmm. it is itself um, a smart device. Yeah, it also that processing power also allowed us to do detections and that is a big big deal nowadays a, a smart camera now it's all about the detections and could you list some of the detections that so you yeah know, that come pretty standard the the big ones that everyone knows is person detected um you know per, what is it person detected ring package delivered vehicle uh line cross that's a, big a one. line cross a vehicle i've heard dog bark before yep a noise l loud noise is basically where that comes from sure. uh there's also a, the newest ones i've seen is fire and smoke fire and smoke as um, well so, so i got more hands to count now so that's seven uh, uh, yeah, which we, is great that you could filter through that otherwise it was like you were just you know endless scrolling on some dvr or nvr database now you have the the smart element that 
uh, really makes the system smart itself. Yeah, and it's not just motion. You know, you're not just getting, uh, you know, anytime there's motion, you're, you're getting a person or a vehicle specifically. So, so I know I have, we've got some things to kind of show and tell too. Like we talk about motion and person. I don't need to know a car that drives by my house, but if I have a video doorbell like this, I can know if a person is crossed a line and then I know actively what to do. It'll probably ring my phone mm -hmm. and I can communicate with them through this device too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a this is a Unify doorbell. So it's a, you know, we 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 really like Unify and their their brand and their product selection. Yep. So we, we talked really a lot about it. their networking just recently on our episode. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is uh this doorbell is really cool. It actually this particular doorbell has two cameras oh, that's in it. Right. It has um, the camera on the bottom yeah, so you can see is... packages because that that is one thing about the ring cameras is it's just a super wide view which is great if you'd like need to see everything but it's kind of it's too much and mm -hmm. having the segmented view to see packages or uh, just right at the foot of the door and then having an even better camera view straight out mm -hmm. you can even wedge this too so you can like have it on the right angle yep yeah and this this particular doorbell even has different uh I think they're called covers, but you can you can like make it white, or something. yeah, like a skin yeah. that you can overlay on it. Uh, th though we we like these; they're really good. Um, they're they're just a really awesome camera. A um, a distinction I I like to talk about with these cameras is compared to the standard Ring product, the feed that goes from this doesn't go to their cloud. Correct. Yeah. So there's when we talk about cameras to our customers, we we talk about two. There's there's two camps mm -hmm. to cameras technology, right? You have you have the uh, the cloud storage based cameras. Those are going to be Ring, Nest, Arlo. We're um, paying a Simply subscription Safe. for their cloud storage, effectively. Correct. Yeah, and you're when you are accessing the video, you are not accessing the camera's video locally, right? Like you are not up, up to, to the cloud thing, coming back to me. And yep. also, if Wi-Fi is uh, if there's no internet to the house, the cameras won't report to their servers. Mm -hmm. It also means that bandwidth upload is a big problem. Limited by the the cloud storage Correct. Uh, and server. Also, it, unless you are a business, uh, most ISP plans, most internet service plans mm -hmm. do not have a have a really fast download, right? 1.2 gigabits per second. I, you can watch 20, 20 Netflix movies simultaneously. But then their upload is like, ah, maybe one or two. And that's why we do the local recording. And I'm, I keep bringing this up just to show, but it has the storage drive, which we mm -hmm. talked about in our networking episode. But it's more related to the surveillance system because Correct. the cameras themselves are branded ubiquity. They connect to the networking system and they record locally but it could always be accessed mm -hmm. remotely as needed. Yep, because that is your internet. Uh, that is your internet gateway. So it, it's kind of a really clever device because you have your 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 camera footage, the thing that absorbs most of your internet traffic. Sure. Um, stores locally on that device, and so when you're connecting remotely, you're just pulling into that device. So you're you're reducing your your general your overall network bandwidth load by having a solution like this um, mm -hmm. and you it, your your video footage stays with you it's at your personal you don't have to pay fifteen dollars a month for the rest of your life which is great mm -hmm. yeah that is uh, something interesting right is a uh, unify currently I, I say currently because I, I don't know what will happen in the future but good point currently uh, you do not have a monthly or yearly subscription fee to use unify um, to use to access the cameras remotely to any of that so stuff. It's a one-time cost. And then when we do larger deployments, we don't always use this this mm -hmm. particular one. This is great. One one hard drive, right? Uh, we typically sell an eight terabyte hard drive. Mm -hmm. uh, we sell you know between four to five cameras on a typical job. You typically have like like four cameras. I have. This is, a, there. this is actually a uh, this is a bullet camera from Unify. It's a 4K outdoor rated uh, camera. Really got a really great picture. Uh, one of my weirdest favorite things about it is when this thing detects a detection, whether it's a vehicle, a, a person, there is a blue light that spins around this, and so you you visually know that thing is working. Sure. And uh, and it's it's pretty imposing. If you know, I've I've we've had them outside. It's and, a deterrent. 
it, it is a mm -hmm. weird deterrent, right? It's it's noticeable. You can definitely tell oh, that camera is definitely watching me. Um, and so it's it, it's a cool feature. And but then when I walk by it, I'm like, nice, my camera's working. That's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yes, it's still working. Yeah. So these cameras, uh, they talk to it. However, uh, like what we were saying with bandwidth, right? Th there is a limit to how much data can be stored on an eight terabyte hard drive and, and how many cameras you can have on it. And the quality of that camera. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you need more cameras or you need to scale up, uh, Unify sells a NVR. It's called a UNVR, and it's similar to this, but except it just has multiple multiple bays. hard drives. You also the other benefit of having multiple hard drives is you get to add. I'm going to use a network. I'm going to use a computer term called RAID, and RAID RAID and R A I D R A I D. Correct. And what RAID does, I'll keep it simple, is it. It basically can either clone a hard drive. So you have two eight terabyte hard drives, you it clones. So if one hard drive fails, you still have all your camera footage. It's like emergency redundancy. Correct. Yeah. And so and then Because things break. Yeah, and, and especially hard drives. Unfortunately, <laughs> a, a hard drive has a moving part in it. Uh, if you were to rip apart a hard drive, there's a little thing called a platter. It's a little so like gold looking disc inside it, and that's what all your data is stored on. Well that thing is spinning at 7200 rpms um, all the time it's it's has this read write there's this little uh, thing that basically is writing the data on it and and erasing the data on it and over time that will just fail it's so we just plan backups correct and so we talked about how you know there's different levels of like data based on the camera like one view of an alleyway might be a lot less data than the 360 cam or the PTZs that we uh, deploy on projects. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, so the, the video, when it comes from the camera is being stored in some kind of video streaming format. Um, I believe they're using H2 S H265. Uh, might yes, be that's right. That's what I thought too. Um, so <laughs> that, it's a it's it's a way to compress video yes um, to increase storage capacity but not lose lose a fidelity something that always gets brought up is you know why not just put a I'm gonna use another term PTZ camera right what it why, why do we sometimes recommend having two cameras one's here one's here why not pan, just tilt zoom why not just folks. have one that moves around right sure and move, move uh, around pan tilt zoom it Yep, and so in, and why it's sometimes better to have two cameras is because then that camera is stationary. And so from an analytics, from a detections point of view, you can make very discreet boxes or areas of detection. And sure. when it moves, right, it's it's difficult. Now, Unify has a, a PTZ camera. Um, it's really cool that the optic zoom is just crazy on it. And... Uh, because it's, it's really lenses, it's, it's like an optical zoom correct. system in comparison to just a digital uh, zoom. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, that's why you would use multiple different kinds of cameras. Um, some other cameras that recently we've used are uh, 360 cameras, which are really interesting. Um, I, I we actually have one here. I'm, I'm sure in this video we'll we'll show you one uh, here. And that camera has is a is a camera that mounts really really flush tied up against a ceiling but it's looking at everything in the room all the time it's so awesome it is uh it's really really quite unique oh yeah and now they have them at grocery stores i mm -hmm. had a camera at the grocery store so it sits above your head as you do the self checkout and it's a full 360 view they could see if you put it behind you or in your pocket or something like that. Not that I do that, but uh, you could see yourself on that camera too. It's mm -hmm. really unique. And, and I think to your point, 360 cameras are becoming uh, more widely used um, as the main means to see what's going on in a space. There is a, uh, a software layer to those cameras that isn't really talked a lot about. But remember, the, the camera is looking at everything. So when you look at the raw video, it's a, it's, it's a very weird looking picture, right? It's kind of like a, like an old school world map where yeah. if you took like the world and like flattened, flattened it. it out. Um, and then, so with software, it converts it back. So you have this virtual de-warping the view. Actually, that's what it's called. De-warping. De and so uh, uh, some of the other cameras that we saw, there's, um, you know, obviously there's, there's bullets, there's domes, D domes are the ones where you mount them up and there's like a glass cover around it and it's, it's looking there. And then we have specialty cameras.
Yeah, like uh, the DSLRs, like the uh, really high quality zoom cameras, mm-hmm. and those are really really nice. Yeah. I mean they're they're for uh, specific applications. If you need to see something in high fidelity from a long distance away, license plate readers, license like plate. That technology or mm-hmm. license plate recognition technology um, and then the other the newest line right is micro cameras I believe unify calls them thetas oh yeah those are cool and uh, I uh, I'm I'm really interested in those it's it's unique I mean the cameras it's like your little itty bitty fingernail but there's uh, a little module box that you could hide somewhere else that's the key that's the, really the cool. tech is still there the technology is still there and it's it's this whole camera and they basically took all the all the guts of it Put it in a box, little bitty cable, little bitty optical camera in the front. Cool. I think we're going to see that more often in interior design details or exterior details. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the camera discussion is cool because it keeps evolving, uh, which is it's great to see. And I know, you know, CES had just happened recently, and it'll be nice to see what uh, is, is coming out mm-hmm. as far as technology goes. We so uh, with that being said, one of the things that I'm excited about is uh, really dialing in how well we plan storage for cameras. I know that is something that we're trying to focus on and it's something that's not as thought about, but properly planning storage just is a, a really good way to design the project to, to just work well. I like that. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I also would like to see us in the future making more of a isolated camera network where we can really give full bandwidth potential to those cameras let's leave all those cameras at the fullest high res 4k yeah don't compromise to try to save space but rather get the best out of it possible so yeah yeah. so with that um this is uh this is aj and ryan and this has been the syntegration station and we will see you next time see you later thanks that concludes today's discussion on security door access and cameras You've been listening to The Syntegration Station. You can find the podcast on every major podcast platform, Anchor, Amazon, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. Please go like, subscribe, share with a friend, leave a comment or a question. And until next time, stay smart.